you're about to make a takeoff in a beach 18. Are you gonna lose an engine today? Maybe. No, you are. Okay. I'm telling you, you're gonna lose an engine. But as most aviators know, training doesn't always go as planned. Beautiful, just leave it like that. All right, gear's coming down. Some of the best lessons are the ones you didn't know were coming. Gear's not coming down? Yeah, uh, for real? For real. Uh, your training mission is officially over. So this is a bit of an aviation dream. We got a King Air, we got a DC-3, and a Beach 18, and we're gonna get to fly all three of them. We booked this trip not knowing exactly what we were doing, except that I'd be getting some left seat time in some amazing multi-engine aircraft. The amount of experience that you get is uh, entirely up to you. I'll give you as much as you can take, but I have the feeling you can probably take it. <laughs> the first thing I did was climb into the Beach 18. But when I saw this throttle quadrant, I have to admit I had second thoughts. Yeah, come on in, I'll show you what we got here. Our jump operation, we run it on the weekends and it's uh, turned into a tourist business. And uh, we use the airplanes purely for skydiving. I was excited about all these planes, but especially this amazing machine. What year is this one? 58. 58, cool. 10,100 max gross takeoff weight. Put 14 people in here. Yeah. And go fly. This was the predecessor to the King Air. This is a Beechcraft. This is what they had before the King Air was thought of. That power plant there was the power plant of the day before turbines were thought of. And of course, Dan has a King Air that he uses for high altitude jumpers. So was that your first time skydiving? It was my very first time. Yeah, I'm a pilot. I'm here to like learn about the nerdiness of the flying stuff, but now they're telling me they're gonna make me jump. I think you should. <laughs> so I sucked it up and jumped from 20,000 feet. <laughs> but the biggest adventure of this weekend saw Dan put his own kids to the test where failure was not an option. Everybody's geared up, uh, they're in the door, static liners are hooked up and ready to go. We made some lifelong friends and didn't just watch the magic happen, we were a part of it. Anyway, that along with some amazing DC-3 flying is all coming later. Somebody parked a monster DC-3 right here, so I'll have to talk to those guys whoever they are. For now, we have ourselves a windy Monday for flight training after the skydiving weekend was done. Automated weather observation. One, six, three, eight, Zulu. Wind, three, one, zero, at, two, zero. Peak gusts, two, eight. Visibility. All right, 20 to 28, but it's not a direct crosswind. It's, it's at least 310, so. That's better than 270. Yeah. The prospect of this trip inspired me to get my multi-engine rating. Nice landing. Thank you. And I got myself to flight test standards before arriving here to fly with Dan. But your multi-engine checkride is all about this one task. Can he survive a loss of thrust after liftoff where you can't close the throttles and land? There you go. So you're into that segment. You have to go. Hey, runway's gone. Positive rate of climb. Here up. And I'm proud to say, as of publishing this episode, I've got the rating. I'm most proud of the perfect score for this portion of the test. We talked about a few nuances and differences aircraft to aircraft, but multi-engine flight training is multi-engine flight training. So my point has always been, let's fly like we train and train like we fly. Let's do a one-size-fits-all training package so that whatever airplane you evolve and grow into, your primacy in your early on training is going to help you and you're going to remember and be conditioned to do things the right way. Classic example, you're about to make a takeoff in a Beach 18. Are you going to lose an engine today? Yeah, maybe. yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, you are. Okay. I'm telling you, you're gonna lose an engine. All right, so on this airplane, we'll be taking off like this with, the cockpit's gonna look like this with mixtures forward. You put your right hands here. Now we set power by advancing those, and then we look up here at manifold pressure, right? Notice the red line for manifold pressure is 36, which we're gonna use today, we're probably about use 32 or something like that takeoff is all we need. So what would happen if you use the old standard tried and true method of making a takeoff and losing an engine, go ahead and jam these all the way forward. Right, I got real? them set at 32 yeah, right now. So go ahead and push them yeah, all the way forward. That's a lot more play. Yeah, you, your manifold pressure is going to go way beyond 36. It's probably going to go up to about 40 or 41. Now, let's think about that. Is that good for the remaining engine that you're relying on to get back to Mother Earth? No. So, uh, the power that we set for takeoff is the power that we have available. So what I say is that we set power for takeoff, we set flaps and power. That is our takeoff power. If you lose an engine, what's the one thing you got to do? Gear up. Raise the gear. Yeah. Raise the gear, press on and fly the speed. 
Now you can think about your cleanup items. Uh, engine failure gear up, you identify, verify, feather it. Now on this airplane, to feather it, you're going to go engine failure gear up, identify, verify, feather, and instead of hitting this, you'll just hit the appropriate button. That's left, that's right. So the concept is, any airplane other than Apache 310 Seneca, a normally aspirated lower power, on those airplanes, you make a take off with firewall power. That's the only place where that scenario will work. Everything else, you start flying jets or turboprops, you would never, ever go firewall power because you lost an engine. And a lot of airplanes, you're going to have a flap setting for takeoff. Flaps 8, flaps 10, flaps 11. You're relying on that flap setting to maintain your wing in flying condition. You would never suck the flaps up and firewall the power. Two things you would never do. The only way that training is ever going to work is in your early, early prime training airplanes where that it will work by default. But that's the only time it's going to work. And even in those airplanes, if you're at a high density altitude, if you slam the mixture full rich, you could flood your remaining engine. If you're at high field elevation and making it in this airplane, if you're making a takeoff in Colorado, you're going to make a takeoff with your mixtures here. So if you took off and lost an engine, slammed these forward and those forward, you flood it, it and blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not going to work. What I say is set your power where it's supposed to be for takeoff, and when you have an engine, leave all of those alone. One thing, put your gear up, fly the speed. That's all. When you get up safe, think about your cleanup items, fly straight ahead, lower the nose, get your VYSE or your V2 plus 20, whatever your airplane manufacturer says to do. Cool. Make sense? Yep. All right. I'd say let's go fly. All right. So uh, our checklist is complete, and uh, you got any questions on takeoff? No, no. I'm good. All right. You can turn two boost pumps on. Which is right here. They're on, yep. One. There you go. Mags are good. All your engine gauges are green. Oil pressures and temperatures are really nice. And we are set. Our people in the back are good. That's good to go. We had Brock there to both film the training, but also to get some cool promo material with Skydive Program Manager Terry, which we'd already done in the DC-3. Hey, this is Terry. I wanted to show you the view from my office today from the DC-3. However, the Beach 18 flight did not go as planned so we were not able to get that done. We got plenty of runway, it's nice and cool, so don't be in a hurry to advance the power. Just bring it in smooth. Your eyes are gonna go right here, and your feet are gonna go on the bottom of the pedals. The tail wheel's definitely locked. There you go, there you go. All right, I'll start pushing a little bit. Easy. There's there there you go. 30. Yep. Uh, yeah, now you can rotate. That's good. Hold her steady right there. Nose down. Alright, I got your power. There you go. Nose down. Alright, very good. Keep her climbing. Gauges are good. Turn to the left, keep her climbing, and you can go right on up. Climb on about 130 indicated. Okay, because I'm at 150. Yep, come on up. Alright, now check your engine, make sure everything's good, everything look clean and dry out there. Yep, alright, good. Your rate of climb now, see that? Yeah, that's crazy. 2,000 feet a minute. Yeah. Are we going to keep on climbing? Yeah, we're going up here. The plan was to get to cruise altitude and do a simulated engine failure in an overshoot before heading back for pattern work. So we got set up in landing configuration. And yeah, we're going to get it down below about uh, 120 or something like that. Beautiful. Just leave it like that. All right, gear's coming down. And that's when things got interesting. Gear's not coming down? Yeah, uh, for real? For real. So up at altitude, we had the gear fail to go down. That cutter training mission short, what, what do you think it was? Uh, it's still yet to be determined. It's going to take 
uh, some troubleshooting, but on these old airplanes, there's a couple things that are always gremlins, and one is the uh, the actual switching in the gear switch itself that could be faulty, and the other is the fact that electricity is flowing through this gear control circuit breaker. These circuit breakers were built in 1955, and they're still original to the airplane. We just talk through what you're doing. You pull the circuit breaker. Pull the circuit breaker. Gear handle's in the down position. I'm going to keep it at 4,500 feet. Yeah, that's fine. 130 miles an hour. Yep. All right, we're going to have to swap seats. I got the airplane. Got it? Yep. You want to switch headsets? I'll just put it here. Yeah, that's fine. I saw there was a problem when we were switching from pilot to co-pilot, switching seats. So Dan went through his emergency procedures. All right, you got me? I got you. So Dan now had to execute the emergency gear deployment procedure using this weird foot pedal thing on the floor. It's a, called a clutch mechanism. You gotta really hit it kind of hard and then the gear will free fall into position. I heard it free fall down, but I still didn't get a green light, and that's when I reached down here and grabbed the handle and cranked it about five turns, and then I got a green light. All right, there it is. Okay. And is that the same hand that you came for flaps? Yes. How do you switch it from gear to flaps, like to what it's doing? Well, you, you take the electric motor out of the equation with that circuit breaker right there. It's a two position handle. It's in for flaps and out for gear. Ah, see, that's what I didn't understand. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's on a channel here. If you push it in, it's going to engage one set of teeth. If you pull it out, it's going to engage another set of teeth. So I knew to pull it towards the co pilot seat and crank it in the correct direction until I got that. Right. It's a, it's a secret recipe mix if if you didn't know all this stuff there's no way you would ever get the gear down i mean you you, you have to know the airplane very well to, to to get it to happen and have practiced it a couple times all right so uh i'm gonna recheck your seat belt yeah, seat belt buckled all right uh your training mission is officially over yeah that's all right i'm gonna land the airplane and i'm gonna do a uh cautionary gear test but we still weren't 100% sure our gear was down. It came in handy that we had a fully suited up skydiver on board. Terry was all decked out for that promo footage that we weren't able to get. So Dan asked me to go back and lean out uh, and look underneath the aircraft to see if we had wheels down for our correct landing position. All right, I got a green light and uh, she's gonna look underneath the belt of the airplane to make sure that we got two wheels. So I went to the back of the bus here, looked underneath, flying at very fast, and yes, thankfully we had wheels, so we were ready for a safe landing. Why are you the right person for that job? Because I skydive. I've been doing this for 19 years, 2,155 jumps and counting, and I'm perfectly comfortable in any emergency aircraft situation. Up on manually extended the flaps. Okay. Four, four, traffic inside will follow. Quick visual I got the motor disengaged. Alright. Final gear check is good. She's confirmed that I got a green line and full flaps. Everything else is the same. Winds are still the same. Uh, ridiculous crosswind off the left. And look at that wind sock sticking straight out. Yep. And I was going to make a test landing on the gear after we go through this. Uh, I'm, I'm never super confident of what I, I know I got a green light, but what have I really got, so I wanted to plant one of the gear with enough energy to, kind of like a, a carrier landing, you know those guys always land at full power yeah. in case they didn't catch the wire, well I, I landed and put it back in the air with power coming back in in case I felt something that I didn't like, I was already going to be spring loaded to be back in there again. Right, left, left main is good. And then it eased the right main down and it felt good. Right main is good. So at that point, I felt like it was going to hold. Wow, that's intense, eh? That took all of it, eh? All the rudder you had? Yeah. <laughs> Huge thanks to Patreon supporters and sponsors for helping us make this content. Just about out of rudder. Tail still in the air. Did you use the dab of right brakes to fix that too? Yeah. Yeah, I felt yeah. it. I had to. Just got to go back to the right again. That was intense. I told you the flying was exciting. 
Not dealing with things that go wrong is part of the deal. I mean, it's, things are gonna go wrong. So, question how you deal with it and uh, not lose those eight sec seconds of useful consciousness during the realization that something is wrong. Please visit flightchops.com for more episodes and the monthly contest. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. <laughs> hey, I have my doors, so I can do some CPR on you guys want. Just I'm saying. Okay. I'm not a nurse, but I'll put my mouth on you. <laughs> <laughs>